Hi and welcome back to my channel. Um, right, I've had a bit of a clear up. Got the old R RFM3 out of the way. I thought I'd return to a radio which I started working on some time ago now. Um, and uh, I don't know if any of you have seen this one. This is the case. And it's uh, a Roberts RCM1. It's a it's a, an AM FM a VHF long wave medium wave clock radio. Now I've got a little clock radio in in the bedroom that uh, basically I bought for a pound at car boot sale many years ago, and it's okay. It works. The problem is its reception is appalling on FM. So I thought get myself one of these and uh, job done. I bought this one as a non-worker, foolishly. <laughs> Didn't pay a massive amount of money for it. But what uh, what it is, is the clock is working, but the radio's not. So I thought, can't be too difficult, can it? So uh, anyway, let's pop that to one side. This is the radio. It's in two halves. We've got this side here. Hopefully you can see this. So we've got the clock side and we've got the radio side. The clock side also contains the power supply. So if you're thinking of messing with one of these, don't forget this is 240 volts we're dealing with now, so it's not plugged in currently. Let's just unravel all this. Yeah, it's currently not plugged in, so um, it's perfectly safe at the moment. Let's get that speaker out of the way. Now, I have um, gone through this a little bit. And I do have um, AM reception, long wave, medium wave, but no FM. So, um, I don't know if you can see that very well actually, let's just change the camera angle a fraction. There we are. So yeah, there's some, um, as per usual, some uh, ICs on this one. We've got two here anyway on the uh, radio. We've got a TDA2611A, which is the output chip, and we've got another one, a TDA1071, which is basically the chip that does most of the work for AM and FM. It's a sort of radio chip. We've also got um, a Roberts module in this one, but I don't think we're going to have any issues with the module. Um, I'm pretty sure that was all okay. Um, what I'll do is I'll reassemble this partially so as we can uh, fire it up because uh, I have tested around it and I have found a signal that um, I really need to check around and uh, find out some voltages. So I'm going to pop it, um, not back in its case, but just back into workable order and uh, we'll look at what voltages we got. Okay, yeah, just about to um, put some power on this. What I thought I'd show you is... Um, this uh, bit of kit I purchased uh, not that long ago actually. Uh, it's a mains isolation transformer with um, a variable output as well. So it's a variac and, a, and um, an isolation transformer in one. So uh, when I'm working on main stuff, as I say, I, I have worked on main stuff in the past, but uh, I haven't been able to have one of these, but um, I did splash a boat out um, a month or so ago and bought one of these. So, uh, as I say, I've got zero output, it's all powered on, so I'm just going to bring up the voltage gradually. And, uh, should uh, spark into what's not in the off position at the moment, so let's pop it on. There we go, 150 volts. See, we've got some display uh, showing up there now. Pop the light off, you'll be able to see it a bit better. That's about so 220, 
240. As I say, it's got an ammeter on this, so uh, if there is anything untoward, I should be able to see it pretty sharpish. It's also got current limiting on it, and it's got an auto cutout, so I'm pretty safe. As you can see, um, the radio's lit up. I've got it in the on position, I believe. You certainly hear a thump out of the speaker. Let's pop it on. Let's turn the volume up. So currently I'm on the middle button, which on this is medium wave. Nothing really heard. So, long wave. Again, nothing heard on long wave. I'm getting a hiss out of the speaker though, so it does indicate that um, there is some sort of output there. And FM is absolutely, totally dead. Now, um, I suspect the fault lies in the IC in the back, but I want to just go through some of the fault finding first. Let's pop that light back on. Just adjust the camera back down. Yes, yeah, so I want to just go through some of the fault finding. As I say, I've got to be careful not to touch... Uh, any of this bit because that is live although the main side is the other side of the transformer so it's a little bit safer so yeah really now I've got some I've got one thing to do and that's on here I've got to set up the um, VHF tuning voltage because I've pulled the thing out I just need to make sure that's correct um, so I'm going to do that bit first then uh, I'm going to get into the schematic and look at some of the voltages. So bear with me, I'm just going to set up to do the uh, voltage adjustment on the FM tuner. Okay, here we are back um, with the alignment on the VHF tuning. Uh, it's a very strange setup, this. Again, it's down to the fact that um, it's all controlled with a, an integrated circuit. I've just got it powered off at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, just follow through the uh, instructions here. So these are taken out of the radio and television service and someone actually um, sent that with the radio when I bought it. So that's a good indication that something was wrong and they haven't been able to fix it. So um, I'm going to go through this bit a bit. So first of all it's saying slacken the screw on the drive spindle. The drive spindle is that one there. So just going to slacken that screw off. Set the pointer to the HF end of the scale. So HF is the high frequency. So that's, um, oh, it's actually opposite on this radio. So it's up that way. It's pretty much as far as it will go there. So it does go a little bit, it's an unusual pulley setup. Um, so then I've got to set the voltage on the TR1 collector to 12.3 volts by means of R6. So R6. Being, it's got to be the one there. It's this one down here, R6. So, what it doesn't say is where you measure it from. Positive with respect to the tuner can, not the chassis. Oh, set voltage on the TR1 collector. So, TR1 is up here, collector is the bottom pin. Which looks like it's also the resistor R14. Let me just double check that. No, it's not. So 
so what I think I'll do, bear with me, I'm just going to alter my setup a little bit here. Okay, welcome back. So all I've done is um, just change my probe leads here for, or uh, well, my multimeter leads for a clip on one, and I've just attached, um, if you can see that, I've just attached um, a hookup lead, crop clips, to the uh, negative. So I'm on the collector of TR1. I've got to be earthed on this tuning can here. This is the mullard module, and I'm adjusting this uh, resistor down here. I'll just uh, get you in a little bit closer. There we are. So that's a setup collector. That's the negative, and uh, this is the pot that I'm adjusting. So I'm going to bring the power back on now. Just pop that down a little bit. Again, I've got to be careful because this side of the board is live now. So I can't show you the um, multimeter at the same time with the bench meter I'm using for this. Okay. Let's get this up to 240 volts. Yeah, right, it's going to be an FM, I'm assuming. Okay, so I've got a reading now of 12.14 volts, so I need to be 12.3. So let's just pop that up. Twelve point two eight, two nine, twelve point three. That's fine. Just R twelve by means of a screwdriver at the rear of the control to give twelve volts on R twelve slider. Just R12, what are we just doing? <laughs> Hang on, R12, sorry, wrong resistor. So R12 is this spindle thing here again, so I've got to... Screwdriver slot at the rear of the control to give 12 volts on the R12 slider, and the slider is the middle one. Again, I'm being careful here because this is live beside me. Get off. Uh, well, that's showing 5.4 volts at the moment. Strange. So we've got a screwdriver slot in the rear there. Again, no. Uh, being really careful. Just tweak it back a little bit. Unusual way of setting a radio up, but it was certainly off before. But whether that was because I twiddled it, right? Tighten the screw on the drive spindle. Back up again. So we move position now. So there we are set. Check that it's remained at twelve volts. Just double check that then. OK, 
Okay, now set it to the low frequency end of the. Let's get my scooter out of the way of the electrics. Low frequency end. Just R13 to give 2 volts or 2.6. Now, where's R13? So let's get you back in the picture. Sorry, I'm moving about here. You can't really see what I'm doing. So I'm now looking for R13, which um, is at the top here. What's this one here? So that's the high frequency end. This is the low frequency end, and I'm looking for two volts, about 2.6 at the moment. It's very touchy. It's about the one in the middle almost a minute. There we go. 1.997, 1 1.998, 1 that's pretty good. So that's that done. This has jumped up again there. <laughs> Every time you tighten it, it moves. I suppose it's just as to give it the full uh, tuning range, but um, yeah, gonna have to slacken that again. Could be a while. Seems as you tighten it, it's um moves it, so I need to move it probably just below 12. Let's go 12.8 and tighten it, see what happens. Point one four eight. That's better. I can probably pull that up on this control. Right, so that's dead on 12. Let's pop them over the other end of the scale. That should be dropping to 2 volts, so it's better. It's on 1.8 at the moment. Two volts, brilliant. There we go. Whew. What a faff. So there's there's the VHF tuning voltage done. I don't know if there's any other uh, follow on to that, hopefully not, because that's done my adding already. Yeah, that basically is is that alignment done. So let's just hook a an area on here. Tag is up there. Disconnect all these probes. Uh, 
and uh, obviously still no still no FM, let's just try tuning around there we go, so voltages are correct, still no FM um, So can hear stations there very faint on medium wave or long wave. But nothing to write home about. So I want to do that bit first. I'm glad I've sorted that anyway. So the next thing is to go through and check some of these voltages. So voltages are, are measured with respect to negative end of C50 using a high impedance voltmeter not less than 10 mega ohms. Well this one's 11 mega ohms. So C50, let's get my uh, layout plan back. C50, it's got to be the input somewhere. C50, so yeah, so it's this big one on here on the power board. So it's negative in respect of that. So I'll clamp my um, negative lead of my multimeter onto that one. Stuff out of the way. And the bench space here really. <laughs> this hanging wire by the way is just like a a wire that you use to turn the um let's get the other lead. Why I used to snooze the alarm clock. I'm sure that'll get used well if I can ever get this thing working. Bear with me, I'm just going to hook this other lead up. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Um, I've got my negative lead now clipped as it should be. Just zoom back out a fraction. My negative lead is clipped down here. Let me just get a, something uh, non metallic I can point with. So down here my uh, earth negative lead is connected from my multimeter. I've just got my short um, nice and thin probe on the other lead. These hook leads are really useful actually so well worth getting some of those. Just come in now. So um, as you can see I've got my um, schematic out here and I've also got the board layout. So I'm going to try and follow the signal, well, I'm going to try and follow the voltages through the circuit diagram. So I'm going to start on the module here, which is where the signal comes into the radio. So we've got our antenna here and we've got the ferrite at the back where everything comes into this module. Um, I believe it does anyway, I can't see, I've lost part of the circuit diagram there, but uh, definitely the FM comes in there. So on pin 8 of the module, which is up the top here, let's get you right in close. Pin 8, which is, pin 8 is that one there. I should be seeing 3.7 volts. Let's go in there. And I'm not getting 3.7 volts. I'm getting 0.7 of a volt. Okay. So I don't know whether that alters depending on what you're on. Yes, it does. I assume that's the FM module then. So I'm getting 3.66 there. Look. That's near enough. 
so where are we going next? So that's basically supplying voltage into TR1 up here. Uh, so D1, I should have 3.7 on the base of that. So D1, I assume, is this one. There. 12, 3.6. Okay, I've just had a quick look come at this module, just to confirm, and it is uh, an FM tuner module, so <laughs> yeah, my mistake. This has got very cap diodes in it, which is probably um, all down to, down to the through the voltage, so I'm hoping that um, it's not that faulty, but it has got um, the correct voltage coming out on pin 8. Pin 5, that should have 11.7 volts coming out of it, let's just double check that. Pin 5 being the other end. Oh, no. 11.4, it's near enough. Okay, I've been working off camera um, with this radio. And uh, I've gone through, done a fair bit of work measuring all the voltages. Now, um, all the voltages I've got on the um, schematic here, um, we've got. There's not a lot of voltages on it, to be honest. I'm assuming that some of the voltage they put on there are the key voltages. Now, strangely enough, I have pretty much got the right voltages on all of that. So, um, really, those voltages aren't indicating to me that there's an issue with the set. Well, obviously there is because FM isn't working. So what I've done, I'll show you in a minute. I, I have come to a conclusion on this one. Let's pop, it, pop the power back onto this one. I have come to a bit of a conclusion on it. And uh, I'll really just show you how I actually got there. So I'll get my little signal tracer again. I'm gonna pop this on. Now, I'm on FM at the moment. As you can hear, nothing coming out of the speaker. Uh, volume. Volume's fairly high there. So, probing around on this with my signal trace, I've come to IC, IC1, which is this, and down on these pins, on the left-hand side, which is pins uh, that actual diagram is wrong on there. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Let me get my other one. Yes, yeah, so the diagram on here, I can only assume that this um, picture is from the underside of the board, so the underside of the pin, because it's actually the other way around in the circuit. This um, this component layout tells me better. So it's pretty much saying that I've got chip uh, pins one to eight down the left hand side of the chip, and nine to sixteen on the right. So uh, I was going down through here probing around. Just hook the antenna onto it. These FM sets sometimes don't work at all without an antenna. I'm sure this was no different. Try again. There we are, we have a signal. It does help if the signal trace is actually turned on. <laughs> if you can see what I'm doing here, I've got my uh, little signal tracer here. Just out of shot. So yeah, just probing down the left hand side of these pins, looking at the circuit diagram, the signal should be coming out of pin 7, which is that one. There's nothing there. But I've got a signal on pin 
One, two, three, pin five. Now I should have a signal there, but quite a low level signal. Just get that. down a little bit. As you can hear I've got a fairly high level signal coming out of pin 5. Let's turn that up again. And pin 7 where I should have the signal getting absolutely nothing. Distorted signal out of pin 4, which is the first, um, the first amp. I keep knocking the push buttons on this. But I say, no signal coming out of pin 7. So, once again, I think we're looking at an IC. So, what I did then was um, let's just get you in here. Hopefully, you can see that. So, this is the voltage measurements on IC1. So as you can see, there's a couple of anomalies. What I've done is, um, I've actually got another set, but I'll explain that in a minute. So coming out of pin seven, I've got 2.3. Now I've actually got another set, which I'll bring up on the bench and show you in a minute. Let's just turn that off because my hand's a bit close to the mains there. So you can see I have actually got two sets of readings here. Now, strangely enough, this the readings on this are from a working set. Ignore the yellow because I just got confused about which one I was testing at the time. But um, pins four and five on medium wave have got zero voltage on the working set, but it looks like I've got voltage coming out on the faulty set. Um, on the other side, I've got some anomalies. I'm a couple volts down on the faulty set on pins 11 and 12 um, and that really as far as I can see is the AM out which again is very weak so that would also indicate that some um, there is a problem with this chip and pin 15 which uh, again is to do with the AM side of the chip I'm a couple of volts down on that, so I'm a couple of volts down on these three. This one's not far off. I mean, to be honest, on the working set, this is a bit high. The voltage um, in the service manual, it's saying 9.5, and I've got 10.8 there. So there may be issues with the other set, but um, anyway, that shows you that there is an anomaly. It's good to have a, a working set to compare it with, really. So let's get the other set up. So if you remember, I had. Um, I had signals on. I had signals on pins four and five of this set, a faulty set. So let's get the other set up, and I'll show you what I found on that one. It's going to be a cracking little radio, this actually, because it uh, certainly pushes out some power. I believe it's four watts this one, from memory. Right, here's the other set. <laughs> As I say. This one is, was bought just purely for spares. All the um, writing's pretty much gone off the front. Um, you'd have to be pretty, pretty good to uh, replace that. I have got some transfer paper, but I, I don't think it'll transfer white <laughs> because it's it's clear. Um, so this was bought in really because the alarm display doesn't work. 
so I could um, I could get a chip for that they're showing about 21 quid on eBay which is a lot of money for a set that's probably not worth a lot more than that anyway certainly as it is at the moment so what I'm going to do I'm just going to swap the uh, plugs over into my isolation transformer again pop the power on and zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit more of this so there's the front of the set let's just turn that off a bit you might be able to see that you can see the displays all over the shop if I push any of the buttons we have a good feedback from the young people they said it's better to listen to you so that should be off now but it's still on <laughs> but yeah you can see the displays uh, shop you can hear that the uh, FM radio is working on this one. So let's um, pop this wire on. The motivation of the young people who go to see it. And also we understand the problem from the families that you are distressed that people who go and join them may be asked to turn the volume down. Okay, let's see if I can zoom in on this chip for you that I'm uh, looking at. Bear with me. Okay, so I've got the volume down at the moment. Let's connect back up my little signal tracer again. Just hooking the earth onto the uh, FM tuning can. Pop the volume on it. Let's say, if you remember, on the other set, we had a signal on pins four and five. So yeah, we've got a weak signal there on four, which you'd expect. Slightly stronger signal on five again, which is right. Ah, oh, it was a very, very, and a very moment because loud I signal on pin seven. It was died, and I go there to pray in the mosque where all the young boys pray before to go to see her. And so. That concludes that, yet again, an IC has gone. Um, as you can see, this is a TDA. Hopefully you can see, you should be able to see that on, on camera, actually. I'm probably getting a little bit closer. But yeah, that's a TDA 1071. Now, you ever search for that on the internet, and um, you will not get one. Well... You can get them, but you pretty much got to send off and buy them in bulk um, to China, Japan, that sort of thing. I have managed to find some though, so uh, I'm hoping that they're going to come. <laughs> Possibly today, if not today, it'll be tomorrow, because I say these are big sets, so I want to get them off the bench really. So, yeah, that uh, is definitely faulty. So, there you are. I hope you enjoyed that. As I say, it's, um, again, really down to my signal tracer. Having voltages to compare the circuit diagram. And as I say, a, a second set. You, you just have got no um, idea, really, unless you've got a working set, what you're supposed to get coming out of that. So, thanks for watching. And um, I'll get the chip and we'll see how we go. Thanks for now.